I'm at home sometimes like, what are y'all doing? Don't look to the right or to the left. Stay focused on the race. You ain't Usain Bolt. You ain't whoever, Michael Johnson or somebody like that. You can't do that. You get distracted. So you got to stay focused while you're running in the race. Laying aside hindrances is the key to victory if you're walking this faith journey. Um, you know, there's some good stuff out there in the world that you can make in spiritual context. And Michael Jackson said it really well. I don't know if you remember some, Michael Jackson has some good music when Michael Jackson was here with us. And so the, the spiritual theologian, Michael Jackson, once said, I'm, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. No message could be any clearer. If you want to make a change, you got to look at yourself. That's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because we look in the mirror and we don't like what we see. We don't like some of the things that we've been through and some of the things we have to go through, some of the things we have to deal with, but you got to begin there. And when he's talking about men, he's not just talking about men, he's talking about women too. Lest everybody get caught up in that. So we got to start and turn the mirror and look at ourselves and say, what is it that I need to remove from my life? I have some hindrances, I have some obstacles. I have some encumbrances. I have some heavy weights that I'm carrying. And everybody has those. Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any weights or nothing like that in my life. We just understood what your issue is. Come up after service because we can pray together. We all have them. We all got some struggles we got going on, some challenges, some things that are blocking us from getting the best of God that are blocking our faith, our our complete faith and trust in God. Uh, And we have to recognize those. And you got to identify those things and accept that you have them. Oof, that was just for somebody. Watch this. Here's what the the, uh, hindrances are or obstacles can be sometimes. Sometimes your obstacle can be your job. Uh, I've heard some people in the workplace sometimes, and they say they go to work for their safety away from home. Hindrance obstacle. Why are you coming to work to be safe and you can't go home to be with your spouse and your kids? Something's going on there. Um, uh, or, or um, oh yeah, and your job, and sometimes our workouts, physical fitness. Some people, I, know, I just experienced a little more when I came to California. Some people are really into their physical fitness. They in the gym. How are you in the gym all the time? I don't got that much time to be in the gym. They always working on the outside of their body and fitness and all, working on it so much because there's some things that are missing on the inside, some stuff that's blocking them from getting to the things that God has for them. Um, and, uh, and I got to touch, touch on this one too, and I know it's going to get on somebody's nerve, but sometimes a hindrance or obstacle is, is people. Ooh, I wonder if somebody can understand. They got quiet on that point. They just got quiet just now. Sometimes we have people who are obstacles we allow them to be obstacles in our life and we can't have our complete faith and grow in our faith because we've let these people block us emotionally and we're tied emotionally. Ooh, I'm a preaching just right now. Let, let, me not, let me not put this on you. I'm gonna put it on myself and tell a story about myself so y'all don't feel too convicted. But if y'all get convicted by the story, then it, so be it. Um, uh, it was a time, and, and I think I've shared with you before that I played college basketball, and, um, and it just so happened in high school and college, um, at some point in my career, the head coach goes to another team. Uh, so my coach was Jim Calhoun, who eventually went to UConn and played for uh, coach at UConn Huskies, three national titles, and just did phenomenal things after that. But you do realize that after the head coach leaves, another coach has to, can come in. And sometimes, even in business, right, the new person that comes in has a different philosophy. I got some head, hold on, they're they're feeling me over here now. They have a different philosophy about how to do things. Your coach on your, your school team or a business person, they come in and there's some changes that begin to happen. Um, and as a result of the change that we had after my junior year completed, my senior year, we had a new head coach. Um, and uh, just for sake of conversation, we'll call him Carl. Um, and, uh, and Carl came in as the head coach, and he, by uh, maybe any uh, measure of business, came in and did that very thing. He had his certain players that he wanted to have, some players that he had recruited, and some people like myself who he hadn't recruited, but Jim Calhoun had recruited. He decided to come in and play political games with 19 and 20-year-olds. Um, and so he comes into uh, uh, his head, head position, and I remember it was almost like the first or second week in practice, and he was trying to run some of my teammates out 
um, because they weren't doing something that he asked or something of that nature. And two or three of them left the program. Um, and, uh, and so I was smart enough to say, I got a free education, a full scholarship. You ain't running me out of here. I think, I think my son knows, my son knows LaMelo Ball. Some of y'all know LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball always says, if it's free, it's me. <laughs> and, uh, and so I remember in one practice, I remember in one practice uh, with the first couple weeks and, um, and he came over to me. I was shooting free throws. We were working on our free throws with another teammate. And I was working on free throws. And he says, Lee, you might as well go ahead and quit. Um, yeah, really. Those things happen. And, uh, and what else happened in that moment, too, is that I realized that I was my mama and daddy's son. And I, and I said to him, I said, Lee's don't quit. Coach, I don't quit for anybody. And, uh, and I went back and shot my free throws. Um, but what was to the matter even further, as the season goes on, and he reduces my playing time, and those kind of things kind of go on. And, you know, if you have a bigger perspective on what God's doing, you don't worry about those small things. Um, but I remember in one game, he gave me some minutes in a game, and I knocked down that three in that game. Uh, my son knows the story that I was the highest percentage three-point shooter in my college, on my college team. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to explain why in just a moment. I got to shoot one three-pointer in my senior year, and I, so I was 100% from the three-point line. You know, you know when you shoot, you got to go back like this. And I got one back here. All your teammates are screaming. It takes the, the, the game over 100 points, you know, those kind of things. And the place was going crazy, right? Um, and, uh, and so I did the same thing the next day in practice. It was probably like our second to last practice or something like that. And I knocked it down another three in practice. And, of course, I'm running back the same way. You got to do the pose, snap down. <laughs> And I'm running back, and I'm backing, uh, running backwards past my coach. And, uh, and he says to me, he says, Lee, too late. And, uh, and I looked at him, and I said, Coach, I'm just beginning. I'm just getting started. You see, it, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't a fault of his. He just didn't see my potential. He didn't understand what God had in me and what God was going to do in my future of my life. And if I had been less of a person, I would have given up and I would have quit and I would have let go of a lot of things that God was already building up. That's the message for you right now, too. You got to have the right attitude. You got to have the right focus while you're running the race so you don't give up, so you don't quit. So we got to examine ourselves. What's hindering you? What's slowing you down? What's tripping you up? Um, and so I love the analogy that the author is using here and just this running analogy. You know, you've probably heard that the Christian race is like a marathon. We're not doing a sprint, but we're taking our time. And, and, uh, but, but the Christian life is also a relay. You know that you have uh, previous winners who've already gone through and lived their life and live a life of faith, and now they're passing the baton to us so that we can be faithful as we're running our race. So we got to look at those hindrances um, and things in our lives. And, and uh, if you ever, uh, I don't know how many runners are here or if you you don't have to put your hand up. Maybe you watch some people run or something of that nature. Um, but runners can't afford to, to wear heavy weights when they're running, no matter what kind of race you're talking about. Um, and, and some of us older men now know that we sometimes carry a little bit heavier weights. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily help us, but rather hinders us. And there's nothing wrong with carrying a heavy weight while you're running. Um, but it may not be beneficial. You can put on a heavy coat. You can put on a weight jacket when you're running, but it's going to hinder you. It's going to slow you down. And, uh, and the principle I'm talking about right now is actually biblical, right? It's all things are lawful, but all things aren't expedient. They're not beneficial. Um, and so you can do it if you choose to do it. However, it may not benefit you. Uh, and so God is saying to somebody, throw off some of those heavy weights, Lay some of those things aside because it's going to benefit you as you're running your race here in life. Uh, they had some encumbrances in the Old Testament. Some of those main uh, encumbrances were the Judaistic legalism, uh, the laws and the rules and the regulations, uh, which weren't um, you know, necessarily problematic all the time. They're, they, were, um, they were wrong in some of the ways. Some had been prescribed by God in, in, uh, in the time of the Old Covenant, but um, they brought some hindrances they brought some heavy weights, and some were very, very heavy weights. Um, and God is wanting to encourage us this morning to start letting some of that stuff go. Start laying it aside. 
start releasing it to him. Somebody needs to come to the altar at the end of the service this morning that has a heavy weight. You were carrying it from the last month, the last week, maybe for a whole year, maybe for several years. This is a good Sunday for you just to let it go. It's just, I'm guaranteed you're going to feel so much lighter. You'll walk around and, and say, Lord, thank you so much. I don't have to lie anymore. I don't have to cheat. I don't have to steal. I can let some of those things go, some of that stuff in the world. I got to let it go. I can't bring that stuff into the church. This is, this is our hospital where we can get better. And I got to let some of that stuff go. I got to release it. We release it right now in the name of Jesus, those heavy weights. Moses, Moses is a great example of laying aside the comforts and the good food and the pleasures in the royal palace in Egypt so that he could be God's great leader. Amen. And we know we have that leader in Jesus who laid aside so much in order that he could fulfill the will of the Father. And so let me just ask, what is Jesus asking you to lay aside this morning? Maybe it's you that's here that needs to lay aside some heavy burden. Um, your lifestyle isn't according to God's plan. You come and you call yourself a Christian, but you're living outside of the will of God in your relationship life. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Got to lay some of that stuff aside. Maybe it's a previous relationship. Maybe it's your possessions that you value too much. Maybe it's some of these pleasures that you have in your life that are taking too much of your time. Or watch this, maybe it's pride. Maybe your pride is getting in the way, and you know that the Lord hates pride. And so got to let some of those things. And in the, 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 um, the words of the biblical scholar Taylor Swift, you got to shake it off. Just got to shake it off. Let it go. Lay it aside. Somebody knows about that biblical scholar Taylor Swift over here. <laughs> got to let those things go. Some of those things that are hindering, hindering us, those obstacles, some of those encumbrances. Got to let those things go.